When it says they didn't realize the end was near until Noah entered the ark and then suddenly the flood came and took them all away in judgment, it will happen the same way when the Son of Man appears. The flood came and took them all away. Who did the flood take away? The people on the outside of the ark or Noah and his family. The people that were taken away in the flood were not those who were saved. The people that were taken away were the people who were lost. They were taken away in the judgment of the flood. All we've got to do is just read the verses just like is there in the book. But we've read Hal Lindsey's book. We've read the Left Behind series. We've listened and read the footnotes in Dake's Bible. We've read Barnes's notes. The people that were taken away, this is not a mysterious rapture of the church. This is being taken in judgment. Noah and his family were kept safe in the ark. They were saved in the ark. <laughs> Wherefore, Peter says, baptism does now save us. The people that were taken away were the people who were lost. They were taken away in judgment by the flood. It's not a mysterious rapture of the church. All right, stay with me now. Stay with me. I'm just reading what's there. Now see what has happened. <laughs> what has happened? Folk done read these books. They done read how Lindsay's Left Behind series. They done read this. They done read that. And when they just come and they just read what's there, they start reading in to what's there. That's called eisegesis. You're reading into the text instead of letting the text speak for itself. So let me read it again. <laughs> let me read it again out of the King James Version. Here we go. As in the days of Noah, they. Now, now keep this they in mind. Keep the they in mind. As in the days of Noah, <laughs> as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. <laughs> Who are the them? The them in verse 39 is the they of verse 38. <laughs> I mean, folks, listen, listen. I don't, I don't know any other way to put this, but listen. We, we are either going to deal with the scriptures as the scriptures read, or we're going to continue <laughs> to chase after the tradition of men who go in and twist the scriptures. That's what it's going to do. So what has happened is people have misinterpreted Daniel. 
then they come up with a mysterious rapture to try to convince the church <laughs> it's all going to be okay because Jesus is going to come and Jesus is going to mysteriously rapture the church out before all of this other stuff takes place in the earth. And the scriptures say none of that. The judgment was in the earth, but Noah and his family were kept safe from the judgment because they were in the ark of safety in the same way that when the plagues were poured out on Egypt the children of Israel were kept safe from the plagues because they were in covenant with God and I submit that as the judgments of God are being poured out in the earth the believers will be kept safe because we are in covenant with God that's why Psalms 91 can say that you know no evil shall come by no evil shall come nigh thy plague no sickness no disease none of the plagues none of the judgments none of the vials will affect the people of god because we are in covenant are you listening and the only thing that that has done it has lulled the people of god to sleep now let me say this i've said it before i'm closing trying to if people actually believed a mysterious rapture of the church like they say they do <laughs> now let's deal with the hypocrisy of the teaching if people actually believed in a secret rapture of the church that Jesus is gonna sneak in here <laughs> and ain't nobody gonna know he came other than those who are raptured and it can happen at any moment in time if they really believe that they ought to be doing everything they can do to witness to every man every woman every boy and every girl about the lord jesus because he is subject to come at any time but do you know what the teaching actually does it lulls the church to sleep. So there is no urgency. Because they just believe, well, you know, when he come, you know, I'm going to be raptured anyway. And I ain't got to worry about no judgments. I ain't got to worry about the coming of the Antichrist. I ain't got to worry about the mark of the beast. I don't have to worry about any of that. Because none of that's going to happen until after the rapture of the church. And it's all a lie. It's a deception. It's a deception. Now, let me keep going. <laughs> now, somebody's already saying, so you mean to tell me? They, they, they actually find it by, by misinterpreting Daniel chapter 9, where it talks about the 70 weeks of Daniel, right? And... I can't go into all of it, but long story short, they say that there's one week left to Daniel 70 weeks. And in the midst of the week, this is where they say the Antichrist is going to come up. No, the scripture says that in the midst of the week, the Messiah will be cut off. The, the Messiah, the prince, that should come. Right? That's talking about Jesus. Well, the way they interpret it, they make it sound like it's the Antichrist who's going to come in the 70th week of Daniel. That's why, watch, that's why the temple has to be rebuilt in Israel. See, all of that, oh my God, I could pick it apart, but I, I don't have time, right? We're going to deal with this when we really deal with the, with the bi biblical prophecy sessions in the Zoom, in the Zoom classes. We're going to unpack all of that. But all of that runs in together, and this is why everybody's eyes are focused on Israel. And this is why everybody keeps talking about, well, the temple has to be restored in Israel. Because the Antichrist is going to come, and he's going to sit in the temple in Israel. There is no third temple being prophesied that is going to be rebuilt. 
Are you listening? The only temple that's being built that is a temple of God is the body of Christ. Know you not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are being built together for God as a habitation of the spirit. But this false eschatology dismisses all of that, throws all of the prophecies over to natural Israel, talking about a rebuilt third temple. There is no third temple. The temple Daniel was prophesying about is the temple that was standing when Jesus came. This is why I say, folk, we have to understand the biblical prophecies because if we don't we will be deceived because we have a whole eschatological end time scenario that has nothing to do with scripture god does not dwell in temples made by hands glory to god now let me finish with this so because some people say oh you don't believe in the rapture no i believe in the catching away of the saints i really do but watch now, they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. So also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Two will be taken. Two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Who was taken? The folk that were taken were people taken in judgment. Who was left? The righteous. They were left safe in the ark. Now, let me keep going. Two women will be grinding at the mill. The one will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, because you don't know what hour your Lord is going to come. So we ought to be watchful because we don't know when the Lord is coming. What is the Lord coming for? The Lord is coming in judgment. Hear me. He is coming to judge the wicked <laughs> and take the righteous to the marriage supper of the lamb okay i'm i'm just saying he i'm 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 just i'm just i'm just going with the book now let me let me deal with the other part of this <coughs> all right <coughs> let me look at the other part we are in the last days we are in the last days but there is no mysterious rapture those that were taken were taken in judgment <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's look now. Let's look at what Paul has to say about the coming. Here we go. First Thessalonians chapter four. And if you all haven't figured this out yet, yes, I believe that we are in the time of the end. I believe that we are in the last days. I believe that we are in the end times. We have been in the last days for about 2,000 years now. See, Hebrews 1 says what? God, who is sundry times and in various ways spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, who he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down on the majest, at the right hand of the majesty on high. So we've been in the last days for 2,000 years. But prophecy is playing itself out. Now we are living in the end times. Are you listening? This is the culmination of the age we are literally living through the birth pangs of what Matthew talked about this is why there's so much deception in the earth this is why the planet has gone out of whack this is why there's nation rising against nation within a nation <laughs> you understand what I'm saying we have nation rising against nation inside of a nation see the, all of this stuff that's going on in America, I mean, I wish I could say it's going to get better, but it's not. What's going to end up happening is they're going to start working on a whole lot of stuff, and it's going to look like it's finally got to the place where we're about to have world peace. And prophecy says, when they say peace, 
peace, that is when sudden destruction is going to come upon them. I just have to go with the prophecies in the book. All right. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter four. Verse 13. Here's what it says. First Thessalonians four, verse 13. He says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, <laughs> concerning them which are asleep. That you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. Hear me. <laughs> I, want, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Right? That you sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. For if we believe. That Jesus died and rose again. Now watch the sequence. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now let me let me read it again because I don't I don't think y'all heard me. If we believe. If we believe mm, 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 that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, that's S-L-E-E-P, even so them that sleep in Jesus, woo, will God bring with him. Well, how's that going to happen? Woo. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Now, here we go. Now, remember, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They were marrying and giving in marriage, right? Having children and knew not until Noah entered the ark and the flood came and took them. The flood did not take Noah and his family. The flood took those that were on the outside in judgment by water. Are you, are you with me? <laughs> are, are you with me? The them and the they, that's the same group of people. All right. So stop listening to these lying teachers and these lying prophets and these lying apostles. Stop. Just stop listening. Read your Bible. Just read your Bible. It's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Now, just let me stop there. Let me, let me stop there for a minute. Let me stop there. Who is he talking about? Who, who is Paul talking about? Well, first of all, he's talking about the coming of the Lord, right? He says, I don't want you to be sorrowful for them that are asleep in the Lord because the Lord is going to bring them with him when he comes. What are we talking about? We are talking about the coming of the Lord. We're talking about the parousia. We're talking about the second coming. This is what we're talking about. Are you with me? Are you? We're not talking about a mysterious rapture. We're talking about the second coming of the Lord Jesus. All right? Yeah, y'all stay with me. <laughs> if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him so we're talking about the return of the lord jesus do you see that okay this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord 
Who is he talking about? He's talking about that generation. Woo! Glory to God. He's talking about that generation that shall not taste death. He's talking about that generation who, like Enoch, walked with God and was not because God took him. He's talking about that generation who, like the prophet Elijah, was caught up in the chariot and did not taste death. Are you with me? The Mount of Transfiguration is a miniature snapshot of the kingdom. That's why Jesus said there are some that are standing here that shall not taste death until they see the kingdom come in all of its glory. And what did Peter, James, and John saw? They saw Jesus standing on the mountain transfigured before them. They saw the Son of Man, Jesus, come into his glory, but standing there with him was Moses and Elijah. Why Moses and Elijah? Moses represents those who were raised from the dead. Elijah represents those who did not taste death, but was translated. The fullness of the kingdom will represent three types of people. There will be Jesus, the very image and glory of God. There will be those who have been raised from the dead and receive a glorified body. And there will be those who did not taste death, but were translated, were changed at the coming of the Lord. Are you with me? Do I believe in the rapture of the saints? Yes, at the second coming, not a mysterious rapture. Scripture does not teach a mysterious rapture. Scripture teaches we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, and it tells us, shall not precede or go before them which are asleep. We are not going to be changed before the dead are raised. Oh, y'all ain't listening. Y'all ain't. See, I'm just reading the Bible. <laughs> that, that, that's all I got to go on, right? That's all I got to go on. All right, let me let me finish this. Let me finish this. Hmm. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede or prevent or go before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, this is not another Jesus. This is the same Jesus. This is the same Jesus who said to the disciples, handle me and see a spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see I have. Now, he didn't have flesh and blood because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He poured out his blood for the redemption of the world, but he had a flesh and bone body, but he had a glorified body. It's the same kind of glorified body that the dead in Christ are going to receive. It's the same kind of glorified body that those of us who are alive and remain into the the coming of the Lord, we receive. We're going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump of God will sound, 1 Corinthians 15, and the dead in Christ will arise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. But when is that? That, beloved, is at the second coming. Not a mysterious rapture. It's the second coming. That's the hope of the church. And if the enemy can keep the church's eyes off of the second coming and have them believe they're just going to mysteriously get raptured, they're going to feel no obligation to go out and share the gospel, the good news that the king is about to come to consummate the kingdom. Y'all stay with me. Let me finish this verse. The Lord himself woo, shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, anybody who wants to come along and preach any other gospel. See, Paul said, if they come and they preach any other gospel other than the one we preached, and Paul's talking about himself, if they're preaching any other gospel, let them be accursed. I didn't say it. Paul did. But remember, Jesus said, deception will run rapid. Many false Christs and many false prophets will arise and turn the people of God's ears away from the truth. And when you do damage to the second coming of Christ, you're preaching another gospel. It's another gospel. I don't care how religious it sounds. I don't care if mama and them preached it. I ain't talking about Uncle Boo Boo and them's preaching. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about what does the word say? What does the word say? And like I said earlier, and I'm going to say it again, for everybody who feels called to preach and to teach the gospel if you don't know the gospel you need to go sit down you need to get taught by the lord jesus by the spirit of the living god let him unfold the scriptures to you first then go preach and stop confusing the people of god don't get mad get free I didn't say God sent you. You said God sent you. <laughs> I didn't say you a prophet. You said you're a prophet. So back up your prophecy. Back up your teaching. The scripture says that you ought to always be able to give an answer for the hope that you have on the inside of you. Study, the scripture said, to show yourself, don't get mad at me. The scripture says, study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you can't rightly divide the word of truth, you don't have no business handling the word of truth. So don't get mad at folk who can rightly divide the word and get the people of God free. Don't get mad. I knew this was going to be a good one. <laughs> For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. My, 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 my. With a shout. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Can you say first? <laughs> then. See. First implies there's nothing else that's going to happen relative to this sequence before it. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. If the dead in Christ are going to rise first, how can there be a mysterious rapture that takes place that happens before the dead in Christ are raised? If the dead in Christ are going to rise first, how can there be a mysterious rapture that's going to translate believers and change believers before the dead in Christ rise if the dead in Christ are going to rise first? First means first. <laughs> okay? I mean, I mean, people, listen. Listen, folk. Listen, folk. Listen, folk. When you read your Bible, just read your Bible and allow the Spirit of God to show you exactly what it says. There, there, there's no deep, hidden stuff in there of that nature. Paul said, I'm writing this because I don't want you to be sorrowful like those who don't have hope. 
I so I want you to understand what's happening here. I want you to understand what's going to happen with your loved ones. I want you to understand what happened to the saints that died in the Lord. I want you to understand you're going to see your mama again. You're going to see your brother again. You're going to see your uncle. You're going to see your son. You're going to see your daughter. You're going to see your loved ones again because the dead in Christ are going to rise first then we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, we are going to be caught up. That is the rapture. <laughs> we going to get caught up. Folk, we going to be changed. This corruptible, oh, it's going to put on in corruption. This mortal, oh, it's going to put on in mortality. Oh, yes. All of these aches and the pains that we have in the bondage of this flesh, oh, it's going to be changed. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be changed. Oh, yes, it is. Them sagging bodies, them hurting knees, them, them hurting elbows. All of it is going to be changed. It's going to be changed. It's going to get so good that when it's all said and done, we're going to look. And the, and the scripture says we're going to say, oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your sting? Where is your victory, death? You don't understand. The Lord Jesus rose from First, then when he comes back, then the dead in Christ, they going to rise. And then we, which are alive and remain, we going to be changed. We going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And we all going to get caught up together. And so we ever going to be with the Lord. Wherefore, you need to comfort one another with these words. Then Paul kicks in and says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you don't have no need that I write unto you. You yourselves know perfectly well <laughs> that the day of the Lord, he ties it back into Matthew. You yourselves know well that the day of the Lord will so come as a thief in the night. It didn't say Jesus is coming as a thief. He said the day is coming as a thief. Go back and read Matthew chapter 24 again because he talks about the fact that two would be in the bed and and if the if the if the person knew that the thief was going to come in the middle of the night, he would have watched and he wouldn't have had his house broken into. You remember that parable? The day of the Lord coming as a thief is talking about the day of the Lord, not Jesus coming as a thief. It's the day of the Lord because just like in Noah's generation, they did not know until the day Noah entered into the ark. The judgment came upon them as a thief. <laughs> they didn't know it was coming. Y'all ain't listening. But we want to take all of this and try to turn it into something that it don't say. You yourselves know perfectly what the day of the Lord is going to so come as a thief in the night. Now watch this. For when they shall say... They who? <laughs> they who? For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Isn't that what happened in Noah's day? This lines up perfectly with Matthew chapter 24. Mm. Verse 4. But you, brethren, you are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Why not? Because you are aware of the times and the seasons. You are aware of the times and the seasons. And you are aware of the signs of the times. You're looking for the coming of the Lord. You understand. You understand what's happening. Because you're awake you are in the light. You're not in the darkness. So that day will not come upon you as a thief. Now, that's what the Apostle Paul said. 
Now, I know we got apostles and epistles running around the body of Christ today that say otherwise, but I'll trust what's in the book. I'll trust what is written. I will trust what is written. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Is that fairly clear? <laughs> I mean, is that fairly clear? I mean, does... <coughs> Does Paul's explanation and what Jesus described, you know, kind of make sense? Do you do you kind of see the sequence of events? I hope you do. So for everyone that was wondering, what is my position on the end times? What does the scripture teach about the rapture? What does the scriptures teach about the second coming? What does the scriptures teach about the signs of the times we are living in? the end time we are living in glory to god the time of the end we are living in we pretty much could be that generation that paul talked about those of us that are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord we could be that generation looking at the birth pangs that are taking place in the world, looking at the deception that's taking place within Babylon, Christendom, looking at the amount of the false prophets and the false apostles, looking at the way that men don't want to endure sound doctrine, looking at the way people are turning their ears away from the truth because they only want a gospel that can be caught up in them. Are you listening to me? They think the gospel is about them. These are the days that the apostles and the prophets spoke of. These are the days that the messenger of the covenant, the Lord Jesus himself, the son of the only true and living God. These are the days that have been spoken of in the book. We pretty much could be that generation. God has a people. God has a people and that generation that is alive and remain, that generation is going to experience the glory of God. Now, here's the good part. That generation will experience the glory of God like no other generation has experienced. How is that possible? Ephesians chapter 4. That generation will have been grown into the maturity of of the Son of God. Ephesians 4. You see, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, unto a perfect man. The body of Christ is going to grow into maturity. The body of Christ will demonstrate the manifold wisdom of God. The final generation of the people of God that live on planet Earth will experience the greatest manifestation of the glory of God the world has ever seen. That's why they will go under tremendous persecution. Look at the book of Acts. When the church in the book of Acts walked in the glory of God, what happened? It went under persecution. That's why Jesus says, you will suffer persecution. We got a job to do. <laughs> we got a job to do. We trying to figure out how to get a new strategy for our business for when we come out of the pandemic. <laughs> Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Well, I hope y'all got something out of this. 
I hope this makes, I hope it clarified some things. So anybody who ever wondered what is my position on this stuff, that's it. That really, that, that that's it. That's my position. That that's really my position. That's my position. Do I believe in the rapture of the church? I believe that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Do I believe in a mysterious rapture? No, because the scriptures do not teach a mysterious rapture. <laughs> Does not teach it. All right. Now, when, when we go into and I start teaching on the... Um, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, when we get into the, the, the teachings in um, end time biblical prophecy in our in our uh, Sunday night discipleship classes in a couple weeks, we're really going to lay this out and we're going to look at where these teachings came from. Um, we're going to look at how they came up with this rapture teaching, how they came up with the third temple, how they came up with Israel fulfilling the prophecies, how they came up with the Antichrist, how they're misinterpreting the mark of the beast. We're going to look at all of that. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. To, oh, it's, oh, this mysterious rapture thing, this thing is all. This, this is, I mean, this is what most people believe and this is the tragedy though um because people don't deal with end times and people don't deal with the second coming so a lot of times people may not know what their particular church what their particular organization what their particular pastor believes because nobody talks about it nobody preaches about the second very few people are preaching about the second coming Right? We're not talking about the glory. We're not talking about these things because that's not the focus of our gospel. The focus of our gospel is health, wealth, and success, not eternity, not the end of the age. All right. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I'm glad that every time y'all come, you get some revelation. That's the way it should happen. That's the way our churches should be functioning. That's how you, sh that's how you should feel when you leave your church. Every time I come, I walk out with revelation. That just goes to show the absence of the Spirit of God working in our churches. That just goes to show that. That just goes to show the absence of the moving of the Spirit of God in many of our churches. Because many of our churches are apostate. Many of our churches are operating under a spirit of deception. Just like Jesus said. Babylon is fallen and this is why this is why the, the call of the spirit is come out of her my people so that you're not partaker of her sin you can't stay in Babylon and expect to get revelation you can't get it you can only get revelation <laughs> you can only get revelation from the spirit of the living God that's where revelation comes from and the spirit of the living God opens the word of God to give you revelation. Does this make sense? But a lot of people are trying to get revelation out there somewhere and they never want revelation of the word. They want some other kind of revelation and it's deception. What they're getting and thinking it's revelation, it's deception. <laughs> yeah, teaching about entrepreneurship instead of discerning the times exactly i'm not a motivational speaker i think y'all know that <laughs> i'm not a motivational i'm not a motivational speaker uh-uh no no i'm a preacher of the gospel <laughs> i am not a motivational speaker i am a preacher of the gospel that's what i am but the one thing that is for sure the one thing that is for sure right you sit up under this word oh you're gonna get some revelation and it's not because of me it's because of the word it's because of the word you're gonna get some revelation right it's like the joke that i make i'm done it's like the joke that i make a lot of times i say if somebody sits in like one or two of my conversations they probably get more they probably get more word <laughs> than they get in their church in like three months <laughs> maybe six maybe six months 
right? Seriously. You sit in two or three of my conversations, you're going to get more word than you get in your church probably in three months. <laughs> unless, 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 my God, unless you're really in a good fellowship. And there are some good fellowships out there. Don't get me wrong. I don't think all churches are apostate. There are some good churches. <laughs> They're just hard to find. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me shut this down before I, go, before I go to meddling. But anyway, I trust that you all have been blessed. I, I, I thank you all for your time. And, and I really do have to say, right? I, 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 really, I really do have to say, I don't take your time lightly, right? I, I really don't. And I really do appreciate... Um, I really do appreciate that you trust the Spirit of God in me to be able to sit and, and allow me to speak the Word of God to you. It's an honor, seriously. Um, and, and, and I really do appreciate the fact that you all are attentive to the Word. You want the Word, right? And you're going to take the Word. You're going to search the Word out. And I know this is what y'all do because I get your emails, <laughs> <laughs> right i get your emails with the follow-up questions and that's the good thing because that's what i want you to do i want you to take the word that you hear search it in your scriptures and if you have a question about it send me an email i don't want you to take anything that i say and just say oh it's true because brother daryl said it oh no don't do that uh-uh Take what I say, take your scripture, right? You ask your father, right? To allow the Holy Spirit to show you whether these things are so. That's how you get it, all right? That's how you get it, all right? Mr.